begin by saying the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. So we need to establish a quorum, I believe. So would you please do that? Mr. Suhey? Present. Ms. Bryce? Here. Mr. Harris? Here. Mr. Underdown? Here. And excused and absent are Mr. Terra and Mr. Pisano. We also do are missing and excused and absent our two student reps, Mr. Kellett and Ms. Malstrom. The first order of business is the consent agenda, and all items on the consent agenda are considered to be routine and will be enacted by one motion and approved by a roll call vote. There will be no discussion of these items unless a board member or a citizen so requests, in which case the item will be removed from the general order of business and considered as a last item under new business. And I would like to call for a so moved a motion yeah. for that a motion to approve the consent agenda by Jim seconded by Sheila and we need to do a roll call vote again please Paul Mr. Suhey here Ms. Bryce yes Mr. Harris yes and Mr. Underdown yes first uh, uh, next order of business Wait, was that a roll call or approval that was approval yeah that's it yeah, they okay. all said yes okay okay the next order of business are the board reports, and um, as president, the only th the only thing I have to say um, this month, I noticed in the trust report that uh, a fair amount of money was dispersed for the uh, different activities of the library, and it was quite impressive. I don't remember the exact number, but it's that trust really does a nice job of providing a lot of programs for the library. So I would encourage anyone in the public that would like to donate to the library because it is so helpful to please come forth. And we do get regular donations for many things. People that were active in the library that pass away and, and sometimes we get large donations from members that have a special appreciation for the library. So thank you very much. Do we have any board comments? Sheila. I have uh, just a couple of comments. Number one, to thank our staff um, on, uh, I believe it was Tuesday night, we had a wonderful program here at the library. Uh, the historian author, Jerry Burton, was here uh, with his biography of Zora Duntoff. I forget his middle name. Um, and he was the chief engineer for the Corvette. Uh, and it was just a fascinating program. And I'm elated that Bloomfield Community uh, Cable was videotaping and it'll be on the website, but I, I know we had a, f a full house and everyone really enjoyed it, and I'm sure he's gonna sell lots of books. Um, also, I just wanted to comment that uh, on August 6th, I kept getting uh, from the state uh, Friends of the Library and Trustees the results from different primaries in the state, and I thought it was highly notable that with a few exceptions, most of the library millages passed, and of course we'll talk about um, you know the city of Bloomfield Hills soon, but throughout the state, and you can check that on the state websites. Thank you, Sheila. Anyone else have a comment? Um, I'll yeah. make this comment now because I'll probably forget it later in the evening. But when I was coming in, I I, I saw some people cluster around the display case that had the uh, ceramics in it that were donated by um, um, I forget his name, the well-known sculpt uh, sculpture artist. And uh, I just think that's a wonderful place to put them and a wonderful place to display them. And mother was with the child. Look at that, look at that. Mm -hmm. the, child, the, the child was really, uh, uh, really happy and uh, engaged. So Good. great, great job to the, uh, great job staff. Anyone else? Then we will move on to the board uh, committee reports. And the first uh, report is the finance committee and Jim. Take care of that. All right. Um, Bob Taylor isn't here, and Frank Pisano isn't here, and they're the only uh, they're the only two members of the finance committee. So it's up to me to give the report. This is on page ten of the packet. 
The Baldwin Public Library Board's Finance Committee met on Monday, August 11th at 4 p.m. in the library's boardroom. Present were Frank Pisano, Jim Suhey, Bob Terra, Doug Kosick, and Paul Gillen. Uh, Kosick presented a preliminary report on the fiscal year 2013-2014 <coughs> budget. He expects the surplus of revenues over expenses for 2013-2014 to end up at approximately 202000 so that's a surplus of a little over 200000 The end of year balance went up at approximately a million three hundred and sixty-four in the fund balance. So great job to Doug and the staff for managing the, uh, the budget in uh, an amazing fashion. We had a surplus. Um, so thank you, Doug and staff. Thank you. Uh, by the way, I'm not going to go through it, but if you look on page uh, 12, you'll see the uh, details of the fiscal year 2013-2014. Okay, next, the committee discussed uh, what should constitute an appropriate level for Baldwin's fund balance. And you recall I said it's at a little over a million three right now. Um, Doug will seek guidance from Plant Moran. Um, they they audit a lot of libraries, so we think they should have some uh, information on what other libraries do. But just to get us a second opinion, uh, the staff is doing their own study of area li uh, libraries by calling up them up and emailing them and asking what their fund balance is as a percent of the revenue. Is that correct, Doug yes. and Catherine? I think you're doing it, Catherine, right? I am. Great. Uh, Doug handed out a financial statement for July, the first month of fiscal year 2014-2015. It's always a little bit mis uh, misleading on the positive side because uh, most of our tax revenues come in uh, in the July. And expenses were extremely low pr primarily because July contained fewer than, fewer than two full pay periods. So there's a big blip in the fund balance, and let's not go out and spend it because it'll, the blip will go the other way soon. Uh, Doug also called attention to a new line item, monthly accrual for unfunded retirement, uh, employer con contribution. This line item covers the library's contribution towards pension costs of already retired beneficiaries. That con the contribution used to be folded in with the contribution toward the pension costs of current employees, but the two contributions are now split. So this has been going on for some uh, years, uh, those two contributions. The library is part of the city's uh, pension plan, and we really can't, uh, we don't have any influence over those. Uh, they're in the budget, and now they've just been split into two line items. Well, uh, did I say that right, Doug? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, the committee discussed the next step in the three technology projects, uh, and Doug indicated that an RFP will soon be, be issued for the three projects. Uh, the next meeting, meeting of the Finance Committee is scheduled for Tuesday, September 9th, 2014 at 4.30. So are there any questions on that? I just wanted to thank our uh, fellow trustees, uh, Pisano and Bob Terra and Jim Suhey, because in addition to what our directors do for the Finance Committee, a lot of time is spent uh, at those committee meetings, so we appreciate that. And just to note, when I was in Chicago this weekend, uh, I found it interesting that some of the Chicago libraries were reporting that their um, some revenue was down because they uh, folks are decreasing their use of landlines and that tax revenue from the landlines has traditionally gone to libraries and now with people using cell phones. So Illinois libraries are looking at other ways to augment uh, their revenue. All right. Uh, oh. Well, the next uh, committee meeting, uh, committee report is the building committee, which uh, Jim is going to do again. Uh, yes, this will take a little longer than the Finance Committee in their report. Uh, we had two building committee uh, meetings since the last board meeting, July 23rd and August 11th. I would like to um, skip over 
the uh, August or the July 23rd uh, report on page 15 be because all these subjects were discussed again in the August 11th meeting. Uh, at the August 11th meeting, we went into them in a little more depth, especially a process for a new library building process. So if you move to page, page 17. So I'll go through this in more in detail. Uh, the Baldwin Li Public Library's Building Committee met on Monday, August 11th at 4.30 in the library's boardroom. Present were, were Dave Underdown, Frank Pisano, Jim Suhey, Doug Kosick, and Paul Gillen. Uh, also present were seven members of the public, uh, plus Bob Natera. What I'd like to do, because uh, I think we're going to want to discuss each of these three individually, these three, um, the three agenda items, I think I'd like to just cover them one at a time and then ask for comments <coughs> from the board. Is that all right? Comments, questions? <coughs> okay, the first two dots uh, refer to maintenance. Uh, Doug gave an update on library building maintenance issues. He met with City Mall. Uh, manager Joe Valentine on August 8th to discuss issues including the freight elevator, seating leaks, as well as a proposed maintenance agreement between the city and the library. The major issue that the building committee discussed was the freight elevator, which continues to have problems, uh, not just sporadic problems, but uh, problems that actually shut it down. And there are have been occasions where the freight elevator has been has been inoperable. Is that correct, Doug? Yes. Doug and Catherine. Yes, including just a week ago. Okay, where it was it was just stopped in the up, up position. Up position. And yes. I think it's been stopped halfway down before too. Right. Uh, I don't know. Uh, it it could be. Uh, it's hard okay. to keep track of all of them, but very definitely at the down position. Then again, at the up okay. position. Okay. And this has been going on since. January of this year. Especially bad. Uh, it's been especially okay. bad since January. Okay. Jill Valentine re reports that by early September, uh, Cone, the, that's the elevator contractor for the city, will provide recommendations on the work that needs to be done to the freight elevator. Uh, Valentine is aware that the library is especially concerned about having the elevator operational at the time of the November book sale and during cold weather in the months. Um, building committee uh, is uh, uh, discussed this, and they're concerned about the length of time it's taking the city to address the problem. And um, it, uh, the committee recommends that the whole library board needs to discuss this issue and to decide if uh, there should be an expression um, from the board expressing a sense of urgency in this matter. So I guess I'll just open it up for comments or questions at this point. Yep. Well, I, I feel it's vital and urgent. Uh, just today, uh, as I was coming to this meeting, a mother was there with her um, toddler in the um, the walker stroller and uh, two other little ones debating whether she should get on the elevator because she's heard of the issues. Um, and so for all of our um, patrons and customers of all ages, all abilities, and for our staff, uh, and especially also for the friends of the library who are working daily uh, you know, with books and our maintenance personnel, I think it's vital and urgent. Uh, I'd be willing to draft a letter uh, to the city commission. Uh, I don't know if the next meeting is this Monday or not, but um, to get a letter to our city manager and the mayor um, so that we reinforce how critical this is to daily and evening operations and weekends. The next meeting of the city commission is next Monday. What's the one after that? Uh, September 8th, I believe. Okay. Now, I just want to make sure that we're, uh, it's clear because I was a little confused by what Sheila said. I think we're talking about the freight elevator. Correct. Okay. 
But the, what you're saying is, is that a member of the public was concerned after hearing something about elevators that the that, elevator that the people ride has right. got a problem, which right. isn't true, though. No. That elevator is all right. But others right. do put books on the, excuse me, on the freight elevator. Um, staff has to access it on the lower level. All right, thank you. Uh, anyone else? Jim? Uh, I still like to hear from... Everybody. Andy. Everybody. Um. I think um, <clears throat> I'm in agreement. That this is the city's responsibility. It's been malfunctioning for a long time. The response has been inadequate, and I think a letter would be appropriate. I'm wondering too if the um, the leak, the ceiling leak as well, should also be mentioned in the same letter because that's a recurring problem. That's the city's responsibility. And to do so in a way that doesn't affect the rapport of the negotiations regarding the maintenance contract. You can be detailed and thorough without it being um, unnecessarily contentious. All right. Um, I'd, be, uh, I'd be in favor of a letter, too. Uh, again, think, yeah. um, you know, phrased properly without being contentious, just uh, expressing our concern. I think it should come from staff. With the board's endorsement, perhaps, well, or at least, at least drafted by staff. Uh, well, Doug, uh, I guess I like we uh, we should have your opinion too on whether this is appropriate for a letter from the board. Well, uh, yes, I do think it's appropriate. I had been thinking uh, from the board president to the mayor, um, staff, of course, would help to draft it. Um, if you think that it would be better to have it from the from um, the library director to the city manager with a copy to the city commission, uh, that would be okay also. But personally, I think the the uh, uh, first uh, option is better. I'd agree with that, uh, Sheila. You. Uh uh, volunteer to draft it? And Certainly, sure. and run it past uh, all of the board members and um, our directors before it would be sent. And this would be signed by David. Do you agree, David? I agree. Have we heard um, from you yet? Well, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm looking at the letter that Doug has written mm -hmm. as one thing. So uh, I, uh, without Which is just a draft. Which is a draft, and, uh, and, uh, and I agree. I read it. It looks good. It, I don't know that it mentions the roof leak, which someone mentioned. No, that, that would need to be added. Could be added. Uh, is there any other comment from board members? I know we have someone from the public that has their hand up. So before we go to that, Sheila. No, I just know that there are holes in the top of the elevator. So every time it rains, this last rainfall, that rain comes down the top of the freight elevator. So I, I really think uh, we can talk about winter, but I think um, ongoing conditions for summer and fall uh, are still going to affect it. It's not just the being below the freezing point. The rain is actually coming in the holes in the top of the freight elevator. I would like to let her to, uh, uh, yeah, we can mention the leaks, okay. but uh, emphasize emphasize the freight elevator because if that isn't fixed by the friend's book sale in November, there's going to be a huge problem. In fact, I don't even want to think about this, canceling the, uh, the book sale. So. I think Doug's draft looks good as well. I would potentially add two things. One, although arguably self-evident, indicate that the city owns the building and has this responsibility, this legal responsibility. And secondly, perhaps use this opportunity to leverage the importance of the maintenance contract. It's been lingering out there for a long time, mostly due to the city's inaction. And if we had an uh, agreement in effect, this would have been handled a lot faster, reducing um, um, tension, I think, on both sides. Right, uh, Joan. I think you have to go forward and state your name. That's the protocol. If you don't mind, thank you. Okay. Joan Heineck, can you send the letter when it's ready? Just copy to all the city commissioners. Give them the information. Thank you. That's a yes, good idea. Yes, we'll do that. Anyone else? Uh, David Bloom. 
David Bloom, um, in addition to sending the letter to the city commissioners, you might ask in the letter for the issue to be discussed in the city commission meeting with an agenda item talking about the library. And the agenda, the city agenda probably goes out on Thursday or Friday, so that letter will need to be written and submitted quickly. And then there will be a public discussion about it. Um, I do have some comments about the building committee and the the, the two-pager or three-pager that um, Doug put together, um, but I'm not sure if we're talking about that right now, if that's appropriate or if, if uh, I should hold well, my comments. Hold, hold those off if you wouldn't mind. Thank you. Okay, you ready to move on? Okay. You ready to move on? Okay. Okay, this is the third dot, third dot point down on page 17. Doug, up, Doug updated the committee on the project to place an external drop box somewhere on the library block. As you recall, there are two prime alternatives. One is a passenger side drop on Merrill, where we presently have two five-minute parking slots. The other alternative is a, a driver's side a book drop um, in, in an angled parking slot on the northeast corner of the block. It would be the last one, and there's uh, a sidewalk and curb that comes out, but it would still need some more work. So uh, the, those two are under consideration. Um, Doug talked about this with Joe Valentine, and uh, Joe advised Doug that the police department must be uh, involved in traffic flow and safety issues, that the parking advisory committee and the city commissioning commission would be involved in any decision to eliminate parking spaces, and that the planning board would have to approve any final design since the placement of the drop box involves a change in the site plan. Um, Kosick, uh, Doug, Doug hopes to meet with library design associates on August 20th to begin yeah, a study of uh, alternatives, and library design associates has uh, some professional expertise in this area, so they're, they're the logical ones to ask. Any comments, questions? Public on that? Okay. Okay. The last, last that point on page 17. Uh, next, the committee discussed the process of setting up a new committee to evaluate possible solutions to building issues. Nearly all committee members and members of the public contributed towards the conversation. Uh, Frank Pisano uh, made a comment urging money out of the library's fund balance and uh, trust be used to accomplish small-scale interior projects before asking the City Commission to raise the library's millage rate to accomplish further uh, interior, uh, interior and exterior enhancements. There is no consensus uh, among committee members on this approach. Turning to page 18, uh, the committee uh, did come to the following conclusions. Um, they. Uh, reconfirmed uh, what was discussed at a, the prior building committee that there should be a the committee formed leaving two spots open for city commissioners. Um, the building process uh, would charge the committee with surveying, reviewing, researching, and recommending a long-term building plan broken up into phases. The first phase could be a modest uh, renovation with new uh, study rooms and this this could be very similar to the renovation that uh, we had a consultant Fanning Howie draw up for us back in 2012 but so we do have a renovation plan sitting on the shelf so it wouldn't take a lot of effort to uh, modified and bring it uh, forward. Um, uh, piece, uh, piecemeal smaller scale projects could be considered provided they are consistent with the long-term plan developed by the, uh, the new building committee and uh, that they meet the needs of the community. 
Uh, the building committee would make recommenda recommendations to the library board, which would then uh, take them to the city commission as necessary. The library board will discuss these issues on August 18th, but not vote on a proposal until S September 15th. Um, there was some worry about the fact we don't have two uh, of our board members here. Um, actually, I've talked to both of those separately, and uh, they don't think it's really has to be deferred to September 18th simply because uh, there are two board members absent. So I thought I'd pass that along. So um, um, Doug, Doug is now going to take us through uh, the uh, process that was suggested by the billing committee. And um, yeah, Doug, I guess you're on now. You're best to talk about this. And I'm uh, referring to a document that uh, is available uh, for the public on the table by the entrance. The committee, the building committee, sees two alternative paths uh, to get this um, project moving. One is a library only ad hoc committee with broad community representation, uh, the other would be a joint city library committee, um, similar to the one that we had before, but again with broader community representation. And in um, the rest of the document, we are assuming a library only committee. Uh, if a joint committee is chosen, then there will need to be a couple of modifications to uh, the rest of the document. Uh, a week ago, when the building committee met, uh, toward the end, the uh, consensus seemed to be going toward a library-only committee. Uh, I'd just like to mention that since then I have thought through this and uh, I personally do believe that uh, we should offer the City Commission the option of the Joint Committee first. Um, I believe that it would be wise politically. The City, after all, does own the building. They maintain the building they have ultimate control over purse strings. Uh, it is of interest to the entire community. <clears throat> so I believe that um, we should first um, offer a joint committee, but then also make clear that if the city is not interested at this point, uh, we will proceed anyway to look at options. There are some things that we could do uh, on our own after all, we do have uh, some money in the fund balance right now and also in the trust that could be spent on uh, capital projects. And uh, three categories have been identified. There's the external book drop, there's some technology product, uh, projects, and then there are uh, building-related um, projects. Um, this money is limited. Uh, we certainly could not carry out a full project by any stretch of the imagination, but there are at least some things that we could do on our own. Um, so first of all, there is the matter of library-only committee versus a joint committee. The next topic is the composition of the committee. And um, we are talking about up to two city commissioners. Uh, two library board members, and then representatives from other groups, such as um, the Birmingham residents who opposed the May 6 bond issue, residents who supported it, Basque, teens, young parents, an architect from the community who is not the architect for this project, and the community house. To select members of the committee, um, we would ask people to self-nominate, uh, provide a short biography and state why they wish to volunteer. Uh, selection uh, could be m made by the library board alone if this is a library only committee and probably by the library board city commission combined if it is a joint committee. The size of the committee. Uh, JLBC had seven members. The cemetery committee also had seven. Um, many people view that as the optimum size. The number of nine has been uh, mentioned. That would allow expanded representative from the community. Uh, there was some discussion about 
a formal advisory committee, but we received word from the city manager that um, that idea probably would not work in practice and we would instead um, get input from the community through a, a survey and also through um, various meetings, focus groups, etc. Uh, finally, the charge to the committee um, would include these, these aspects. Number one, um, in, the in, in the first part of this process, developing a timeline, conducting a survey of residents, uh, determining if additional research is needed to supplement what was done a couple of years ago. Um, through the research, through public input, and that's where uh, focus groups could come in again, develop a consensus on what kind of library the citizens need, um, review and prioritize needs and wants, review the library program, the document on which the um, architectural plan was based, determine what changes are required based on the prioritized needs and wants, um, develop a 10-year um, vision, uh, consider a multi-phase approach with a low-cost renovation being the first phase, most probably, and then reporting out to the library board and city commission and obtaining approval for what had been done, uh, what has been done to date. And then beyond that, in part two, um, decide the best way to obtain professional assistance, and this would be an interior design firm, an architect, uh, somebody along those lines, depending on what was recommended in the first part. In other words, what kind of project we're actually working on. Uh, review alternatives with costs and select the best alternatives. And finally, make a recommendation to the library board and city commission. Uh, part of this process would be uh, also to identify second and third phases, assuming that we are going ahead with a multi-phase process. Uh, timing we tentatively thought of as up to nine months. Uh, city and library staff would support the new committee uh, just as it did before and rules for public comment would certainly be uh, developed. Now we have several different points uh, for the library board to talk about. Uh, first of all, what kind of committee it will be. Um, next, the composition of the committee, then the size, and finally the charge to the committee. Okay, uh, Doug, thank you uh, for taking us through the document. And I guess this is a time for comments, uh, questions, and discussion about the board. So. Before we go with, ahead with that, can I ask a question? Uh, going back to the letter to the city, yes, is it it, it, it? it was suggested that it get written so that it can be presented by their Monday meeting and has to be ready by this Thursday. Can we write a letter and I can sign it? it doesn't have to be. You can send it out to all of us and get yeses from everybody. And yes, so that's get that that's done. right. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. I just wanted to make that clear. Okay. So I think the first. Uh, question uh, that we should discuss is whether or not this, uh, our proposal should be a joint library uh, city building committee, uh, similar to how the JLBC was formed, or just a library building committee. And Doug gave his view that it should, sh it should be a joint city library committee. Doug. Well, okay. since the city owns the building, um, I think at least the invitation should be extended uh, to the city uh, commissioners, the mayor. I know they're busy. Um, three of them served uh, and spent a lot of time on the past committee. Uh, so I don't know what else is on all of their platters, but certainly I would be in favor of extending the invitation, and then it would be up to them uh, if they can. I guess I would um, like to see that. Um, done sooner rather than later to get the ball rolling. One concern I have, not only with the, the options about our past, but the composition, size, everything um, that we're discussing right now 
is the timing of it all. I agree with Sheila that the city is a necessary party in any committee for the reasons you stated. But the feedback we've received from the commission and the city manager is not to broach this until January 2015. I suppose nothing is lost if we extend the invitation and it's rejected, but I'm candidly not optimistic it's going to be received well, and I don't think it's worthwhile to form a committee like this without the city's participation. I think we can address some of our needs where we don't need the city's input, but to do anything else requires city input, and I just don't know if we're going to get that before long-range planning in, in January. Now, if folks have heard um, other opinions from the city commission, I would be encouraged and happy to hear that, but I just haven't heard it myself. Uh, I'd like to ask Andy a question. Uh, are you suggesting that because of the city's position that we go ahead and uh, form a committee and get started and then maybe after that point we bring them in? Well, I think if we confirm, and again, I hope this is not the case, but I think it is, that the city does not want to participate until long-range planning. I don't think it's efficient to form a committee, but I do think we can address the elevator, ceiling, other things that don't require the city's input. Uh, it is uh, definitely true that the other two issues, the external book drop and the uh, freight elevator ceiling leaks, um, are on separate tracks, so we will right. definitely proceed with those. Right. And other items, I think you've mentioned this before, like carpeting and perhaps painting, we could do without the city. And of course, if those were urgent, we could we could do those. But the more comprehensive steps that the JLBC took and what's been outlined already, I think, needs city involvement. Um, I uh, I think I agree with everyone here, and that is we need city uh, involvement in here, in you know, in this and with or without whether it's a joint city library committee or a library committee I think we should have up to two city commissioners on it the uh, uh, there, the key issue is you know when the city forms a joint uh, city library committee they are sort of uh, starting it and 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 sanction it and um, and there and therefore there's more buy-in by the city and uh, more support on the commission uh, I'm just afraid if we go forward on our own without uh, um, a request to the city um, I think it's going to be the wrong uh, the wrong way the wrong way to go so I would be in favor of uh, going forward as quickly as the board can agree to with a proposal to the city for a joint committee. Now, Joe Valentine, I think, I, I saw and um, uh, uh, I, heard, I heard Doug say that uh, he thinks it's best to wait until January, but that's sort of a conservative approach. And, but I'm not sure all the city commissioners agree we should wait for the January long-term planning committee. So why don't we just go as soon as we can, make the proposal to the city, and see what they say. Um, I really hate to wait until January, because that's, that's another, you know, three, four months away, and it's another three, four months that we could be working towards a building solution here. So, so I'm in favor of going as quickly as possible to the city and proposing a joint city library committee. If the city commission's response is, no, this is a mistake right now, you should wait until uh, the long-range planning session, I hope that they would tell us bluntly, and then, um, then would, we would reassess the situation. I would say that if they told us that if we can, you know, we'd have to reconvene, uh, we'd have to come back and discuss it at the board, and, and then we can decide to, to go with the library committee only. Sounds like, uh, Sheila, go ahead. Well, um, given all the past history and how much time commissioners spent, uh, and given how uh, slowly we're moving now at this point, I would still like to advocate 
that we invite the city uh, to have representation. Certainly, um, I think you listed, just as in the past, the city manager or another city um, employee would be involved in the committee. So if two commissioners say, or if the commissioners say, no, um, we have confidence enough in a library committee and in our city employee, that would open up two more spaces for wider representation from the public. And certainly we're known for giving regular reports to the city every week. Um, so I think to, to backtrack, to invite the city um, as soon as possible uh, and hopefully to get an answer and say that we'd like to convene by September 15th or, or something like that to get an answer um, back on whether they want to be that actively involved on the committee. Well, I think either, either way, uh, I think we should have city, city commissioners on the, in the committee. So I would do my best to make sure either way we had city commissioners on the committee. Or at least but, a city commissioner? What? Or at least one city commissioner? I'd like to see you? two, but, mm -hmm. but I'd be happy with one. Uh, Doug, are you comfortable going ahead and asking uh, for the two, two people if we agree to that? Uh, I'm sorry, at this point, at, at two at people? This, at two people from the city commission at this point to go forward and, and ask them. Uh, yes, that would be fine. Um, I mean, that is kind of the next topic, the composition of the committee um, along with the size of the committee. You're comfortable with, this, with the commissioner issue at this point? I just want yes. to uh, Okay, now, should we... Do we need to uh, go further with, uh, or should we go to the public at this point? Yeah, but I think well, we can discuss further right, what the proposal will contain to the city. For example, the, the size and the suggested composition, right? Okay. Maybe we can finish up the conversation then more on the composition and then we'll go yeah. to the public. Well, okay. I think the, um, uh, Doug had a suggested motion here, uh, which I'll bring up when we finish discussing. But basically the motion to the city that we would agree to and the proposal to the city was that we propose a joint library city committee uh, consistent with the guidelines on this two pager. So we wouldn't go in a lot of detail in oh, the okay. motion. We would just say, this is it, city. Uh, do you agree or not? Or maybe they can you know, cross out things and change things. But basically, the, the motion is for a joint library city committee to be formed. Along with? Along, you know, the following, these, following these guidelines. Okay, now, now we can talk through the paper here and see if we want to change anything. I just wanted to add, I know you spoke with Trustee Tara, as did I, while he is out of town, and he was in favor of offering to the city to have the, um, or inviting the city for a joint committee. I don't know what... Um, Frank Pisano, Trustee Pisano said? Well, I, I hate to talk to Frank, uh, for Frank, but Frank is in favor of a joint committee unless it involves delay, at which case he, he wants to get moving fast. And so he has no problem with a library only committee. Um, Jim, I read the motion as well, and um, I don't necessarily see a problem with the language which provides the city an opportunity to comment on the composition and the size. But if we have a preference about composition and size, why not express it from the outset? It gives it a better chance of um, resonating. Yeah, in fact, reading, reading this now, um, I see there is a sentence in here. Recommendations for the city's comp uh, the committee's composition, size, and charge are listed in the enclosed proposal. So everything on this piece of paper, if we agree to it today, will go to the city as our recommendation. My point now is maybe the motion should be more detailed because the piece of paper contains several different options. Yeah, okay. Well then, well, uh, well, then we should talk about that. Right. Comment on the size of the committee. At the outset, I would favor seven again and 
two commissioners, two library board members, uh, an opponent of the May 6th election. I think Mumby underscored the, the importance of having a representative from that contingency. And then a Bass member and a teen. But, of course, I'm open to other, other preferences. I think that's seven, yeah. Well, and actually, I, I agree. Um, it, broader representation is the ideal, uh, but we do have to limit it, and the cities um, had good experiences with numbers of um, ha having seven on committees. Uh, it would be ideal if we had one representative who had dual representation. For example, uh, a young parent uh, who uh, supported it, or a um, um, maybe a Basque member who opposed it, um, because they'd be representing, you know, more than one viewpoint. So, um, no, but I would agree we need to include some of this on the composition uh, in our motion to the city, or our motion about what we're going to send to the city. It's kind of a difficult thing to answer right at this point exactly who of these seven different people uh, maybe we could it seems like there's a consensus that seven is a better number perhaps than nine since that's been the recommendation but who those other three people are or possibly five people are it would be difficult to determine that at this point would I think do you agree with that I, so I don't know that we need to Maybe and it involves decide us. seven or nine. Maybe we could decide that for direction. Right. But as far as the rest okay. of the composition, I think right. it'd be difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah, just like uh, you said, Sheila, some there are, there are some representatives who represent different not constituency. For example, if it was Narc Mark Nikita as a city uh, city commissioner, he's also he's also an Arcanet. You know, he's not going to be bidding on his job or has been involved in, in library programs, architectural programs before. So, you know, Dunk so he's done double duty on that one. So we mm -hmm. got a twofer, as they say. Um, yeah, I'm not sure that we can specify right now what the three uh, groups are that we'll be pulling community representation from. Um, well, I think your, the selection process that's noted here, that would be coming up. Um, I thought that was great to consider looking at the process that was used for the cemetery committee and have folks uh, write up their bio, the reasons they want to be on it, and then have the selection done. I, I agree with all that. Perhaps you can indicate, you know, there's a consensus for two city commissioners and two library board trustees, mm -hmm. someone who oppose, and then two more from this group. Whoever seems to, whoever right. appears to be the most qualified. Right, but I, the bios and the yeah, I agree. It's premature to pick all seven. The more I, the more I listen here. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I agree with seven too because I, I just think that's an, that's an, that's an optimum size. You know, this, this committee could could be meeting, you know, at least once a month. Some, uh, some, sometimes twice a month. Uh, there could be ad hoc uh, meetings. There could be. Uh, visits to other libraries, and the fewer people you have, the the better it is to make sure you have uh, representation of the committee at all at all the meetings and all the extracurricular activities, and uh, and also you can make sure you have seven absolutely committed people who will show up uh, at every meeting. I, I understand that was a problem with the Bass Committee, which was much larger. And a lot of the committee members did not show up regularly. And it, and Basque is a different kind of a problem. Oh, oh yeah, it was committees. a very it was a very different committee. Recognizing that, all, right. all the different communities involved. Anyone else on the board that has a comment? Then we'll open it up to the public. And I see the hand of David Bloom going up. So come on up, give us your mm -hmm. comments. I think we've discussed discussed all this. Does everyone agree with that? All right. Hi, David Bloom. Um, I have a range of comments regarding this topic. Um, the first one would be in terms of what kind of committee to set up and how to do it. Um, and you're, you're already drafting a letter to the city about 
the building and the elevators. So a suggestion that I would offer would be why not either add something to that letter or write a second letter that gets submitted with it stating that you've been debating and discussing two different options, one a library-led committee with a city commissioner or city commissioners or a joint committee and you'd like to get started and you've had some feedback to wait until January or the end of January, beginning of February for the long range planning meeting and ask the city to discuss publicly at a city commission meeting what their feelings are now and if they are recommending to wait to January, the end of January or February, what the reason for doing so is because I'm not aware of a valid reason, but, but maybe they, they have one. Um, and then have them decide then and discuss what they want to do. And then you'll either, get, they'll, you'll either get their feedback and you'll get it in time for the next board meeting here in September. Um, and then you can decide what to do. But these side conversations with, with the city manager or a commissioner, um, they're, they're, they're not public. They're not discussed. You don't get to hear what everyone is feeling. And, and there isn't any discussion, at least public, w w without doing it this way. There's no public discussion between the commissioners about what they want. And it's not easy to get a consensus. So why not, if you're already sending them a letter, ask them what, what their preference is. And you ought to get something back unless they decide not to put it on the agenda. So I, I, I would suggest doing that. Um, in terms of the composition of the committee, whether it's a library committee led committee or it's a, um, it's a joint committee, um, you're talking about putting seven people on and that includes two library board members and two city commissioners, and I'm not sure if Doug would be a part of that or not, or if he would be at the meetings, but I'm assuming he would. I would be at meetings. Okay. I would not be a voting member. So, but you would have be participating in discussions. So, if you have seven and you have four people, two commissioners and, and two um, library board members, I really think that the public input, it, and, and if the goal is, if the most important thing is having seven people, um, I, I think that the library board members and the city commission members are going to crowd out the public input that you're going to need to make this successful. And I believe that the committee will end up in failure. So, and apologies for being blunt, but that's how I feel. Um, I think that you're going to get or should get one city commissioner, and I think you should get one library board person, and then you're going to have um, Doug, the library director there. Um, and, and, I th and then you get good cross-public representation and you would make sure that ho hopefully you have the meetings in the evening when the public can come and that includes other library board members and commissioners if they want to get their viewpoint and you have a well-rounded community-wide inclusive um, or, um, uh, team. Um, some other comments here including the charge. Um, I see some things here that are concerning to me and I know that um, at the last library board building committee meeting there were a lot of things discussed and then um, Doug was asked to, to kind of summarize everything which, which I think this is. Um, this talks about consider professional input um, including Lawson and then there's an A and a slash. I don't know what the A and the slash means. Um, I, I think in the last two um, building committee meetings that, that I've specifically suggested, strongly suggested that you get a second opinion and that's not Mr. Lawson. And whether that second opinion is Mr. Cohn and you have a proposal from him to come here and do that, or whether it's another nationally, internationally recognized person that's an expert in this field to get a second opinion, I think you ought to do that. Um, there was so much money spent in the campaigning and the election on both sides. I think that the amount that Mr. Cohn quoted, which was $6,000 including expenses, spending that amount for him or for someone else to come to review Lawson's work um, would be the appropriate course of action. Um, I also see on here again concerning that there's a possibility of bringing Quinn Evans back because it might be the lowest cost approach. And I would put to you that the work that Quinn Evans did 
was criticized by the community. It was criticized by me. It was criticized by other architects. And to have them come back um, again, um, I, I, I would think that you would do everything possible to avoid bringing them back um, unless it was deemed absolutely necessary. Um, they also talked in the last Bit Library Board Committee meeting about other sources of funding, which included grant writing and fundraisers. And I will note that Huntington Woods um, had done a recent or somewhat recent renovation of their library, and they didn't use any public funds, and it was all donated. And I think that was in the hundred to three hundred thousand dollar range. I don't know, but but they were able to go out and raise money for their library and, and do that. So so I would encourage again looking at those types of sources of revenue, including grants, um, for for doing that. And. I will, and also there, what we discussed in the building committee meeting or what was discussed was, and there were some heated discussions about it, and I'm not saying which way it should go, but there are certain things that, that will happen in this library or, or will most likely happen in any type of renovation and construction project, and there is a fund balance, and the fund balance could be used in the, in the beginning that there could be some projects that the committee agrees on that are going to take place no matter what and look at the budget and look at the fund balance and start working on this stuff so you're not waiting two, three more years before anything gets done. Thank you. Thank you very much. I would just like to uh, uh, explain one thing um, uh, to anyone who is wondering. The A in slash is actually a footnote. It refers down to the bottom where it says expense items. So. Uh, these are um, activities that would involve hiring somebody from the outside and paying some money. Thank you, Thank you Doug. Let me ask a question in response to the concern about the public being outweighed by the board trustees and commissioners. Didn't the last JLBC require a 5-2 vote? Yes. Okay. And in theory, that could be the same requirement for a new committee. So in theory, the elected officials would need at least one other member's buy-in for anything to pass, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to uh, uh, go to uh, David's first uh, point about send a separate letter to the to the uh, city commission and put it on put it on the agenda. It's my understanding that if we pass this resolution, we would request Doug to make a presentation to the City Commission proposing this and therefore it would be on the agenda and there would be uh, discussion. That was sort of my concept. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm just presupposing that. Uh, Doug, do you have a comment on that? Uh, it had never been specifically brought up. I would be happy to give a presentation. It would be a brief presentation. I mean, the, the content is here. Um, and in terms of timing, uh, there certainly is not going to be anything discussed next um, Monday evening, um, I'm quite sure, along these lines, because uh, e even though we should get these items to the board, uh, to the City Commission quickly, I think that we have already passed the uh, deadline for getting on the agenda of the um, August 25th meeting. Um, I believe that the city manager is on vacation next week. Um, also, even more to the point, if you expect me to give a, um, a report, even a brief report, I'll be on vacation next week. So we're looking uh, potentially at September 8th for action. September 8th gives us a little breathing room. Uh, maybe we can fine-tune fine this document a little bit, and, uh, and, we'll be, and we can get on the agenda, and you'll be there. And and you make a, a brief presentation, no, no dog and pony show, no slides, just mm -hmm. basically what the board is proposing. Yeah. Um, let's see, uh, let's see, David's points three, uh, four, and five, okay. Three was the anyone but Lawson. Um, and four was anyone but Quinn Evans. And five, make sure you look at grants and fundraisers. Well, this, these would all be 
under the purview of the Newton Committee. So I don't think we have to comment on those now because that would be the charge of the new the committee. Now, um, just to make it clear um, about why we need the Lawson program reviewed by somebody, and that is to cut it back. Remember, Mr. Lawson uh, recommended a 40% 40 expansion, and I don't think we're talking about that now. So you want to cut it back intelligently by a library expert. So it doesn't have to be Lawson, okay? And it doesn't have to be Quinn Evans, but that's up to the committee to decide. Very good, thank you for making those points. Anyone else have a comment further? Sheila. Um, I'm referring to the second page uh, under revise the building program. When we say that we're going to develop and evaluate a new building program consistent with the library's 10-year vision, um, and then also later in this meeting we're discussing our goals, um, has staff, have you um, directors determined a time frame or a window for when we would update our strategic plan? Have we looked at that or are we? Uh, uh, well, because uh, it is one of the goals for, for right. this year, and uh, it is something that should be done in the first half of the year rather than the last half of the year. So it is something that uh, we would be looking at um, this fall very soon. Okay, because I think we're going to be asked about that in the building committee. So um, that's also going to involve a considerable amount of work and a chunk of time. Well, uh, actually, we weren't uh, looking at um, uh, completely redoing the Just strategic plan. Right. We weren't planning to go through the process that we did four years ago. Instead, we would uh, look at the elements uh, uh, you know, where we have uh, accomplished things, what we have tackled and um, not succeeded at, uh, what things have we not even gotten around to, and decide on new timelines. Um, Basically, it would be an update of the old plan as opposed to a completely new revisioning. And um, the first phase, I'm sort of familiar with the strategic planning, and one of the first steps in, co in coming up with a strategic plan or updating a strategic plan is come up with a longer term vision. Mm -hmm. So I think, I hope that this is something that you can, that you can get done in the mm -hmm. next couple of months, the 10 yes. year vision. Right. Yeah, we have talked about that 10-year vision. Anything else? Up? Did we see a hand up? You please step forward and yeah, we it's protocol. I'm sorry. Yeah. That's okay. We're happy to hear your comments. Sitting in the audience this evening, watching, <clears throat> listening to your plans, and seeing some of the challenges you have, and then listening to uh, David's comment about representation, and it wasn't answered, at least to my uh, knowledge. What is wrong with the idea? Or maybe not wrong, but maybe you have a reason to not think that one person from the city and one person from the library board would be enough because then you would have broader representation in your community. Is there a reason why the number two from each is important? That's what was running through my mind. So maybe you have an answer. Thank you very much. I have, I have to confess that I thought that too as he said that. I think I can state the case for two city commissioners. We want, we need buy-in from the city on anything we do. Uh, we need uh, constant updates from city commissions to uh, the broader city, from the city commissioners on this committee. It's, they, they are the elected uh, representatives of the city and they represent the entire community. So in a way you're getting broad representation with two city nut commissioners. And for the two library board members, well, we are elected and we are in charge of the governance and operation of the library. And it just seems right. 
Kayla. Well, I also look at it the other way. For example, if our um, I, I didn't see it from the get go as necessary, certainly to invite city commissioners. Um, I think. Uh, Folks can come for public comment. Um, they can write letters, just as they did. Um, city commissioners are welcome. Um, I, I see broadening who's there having at least one library board member. I do agree on that. Um, and we've all had the background, um, and we certainly have enough on record. Um, so I would be you know, still in favor of inviting the city for two commissioners, but if if they feel confident, and I certainly feel confident in our city manager and our library directors, um, you know, to report back to the city commission and to report with one library board member back to this board, um, I wouldn't have any problem with that. Mm -hmm. Just to try to piggyback on Jim's comment too, I think there's a distinction between input and control, and I think the magnitude of this project requires significant input from library trustees and significant input from city commissioners and I don't think we're being appointing them to control the process but we have a duty as board members to have our voices heard and to to learn what's going on and to receive the feedback and I think it's important to have two from each from each body I don't know if we're going to be able to resolve this at well, this point or well, not. Let's, <coughs> hmm? let's, okay, I'll make, I'll make a motion, which is the one that uh, uh, that Doug draft, uh, drafted up. And the motion is to request that the Birmingham City Commission join with the Baldwin Public Library Board of Directors in establishing a joint committee to explore options for improving the library building. Recommendations for the city's composition, uh, size, and charge are listed in the enclosed proposal. The library board envisions that the committee will start meeting in October 2014. A progress report will then be delivered to the city commission at its long-range uh, planning session in early 2015. I think that covers everything, including uh, the desire to move ahead quickly and not wait for the January Long Range Planning Committee. Okay. Yeah. That is a proposal. Is, yeah. there, is there a second? Is that, are we okay, Andy, on this? I'm hesitant to second it because it doesn't include our preference for number of committee members and partial representation. It does, but it does refer to the two pager. The two pager isn't specific. It doesn't, right? It doesn't. Well, we could modify it easily and say two, two, and three, if that's what you mean. What do you mean by two, two, well, and three? Well, no, it, 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 it says up to two city commissioners, two library board members, and three members of the community uh, to get to seven. Right, I'm just, I have an issue with the language of the motion. <laughs> not being specific enough, not reflecting the totality of what we agreed upon, which I think was for a seven, to recommend a seven member committee, which includes at least two commissioners, two trustees, and um, a no vote. All right, well, well I'd, be, I'd be happy to amend it to that. Proper procedure to introduce a motion to amend. I'm looking at a Roberts expert. Where is uh, Dorothy Conrad when <laughs> we need her? <laughs> right. Um, well, I can attempt to. Uh, at this point, there is no second to the. Um, but there's a motion on the table. Okay. I'm not certain. Mm -hmm. Proper procedure. Councilman Briggs might have some input. <laughs> there's a second and then there's a motion to amend before there's any yeah. vote. I will second it. Okay. Okay. Try this. <coughs> oh, sure. Read it in your, uh, read it silently first. <laughs> okay, <laughs> right.
All right, I'm ready to uh, introduce a motion to amend uh, the motion that Jim introduced a moment ago. It reads as follows. It's a motion to request that the Birmingham City Commission join with the Baldwin Public Library Board of Directors in establishing a joint committee to explore options for improving the library building. Recommendations would include a committee of seven members, including two city commissioners, two members of the Library Board of Directors, and three members of the public selected by the city commission and the library board from self-nominated individuals. Other recommendations are included in the enclosed proposal. The library envisions that the committee will start meeting in October 2014. A progress report would then be delivered to the city commission at its long-range planning session in early 2015. Not being, unfortunately, we have two uh, commissioners from other cities here. How do we proceed properly? Do we have to vote on the first motion and then the second motion? Do we vote on the first? Has already failed, right? No, 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 no I second it. So the s first one's on the table, and the second one is also on the table. So, Joan, do you know the answer? First one has fallen away. Uh, Pat. That, that was what I was hoping, oh, and that good. was my sense, yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, and we don't need a roll call vote for this, I don't believe. Is that? Okay, so now I will call, uh, um, do we, does anyone want to have it clarified as, as to what we're voting on at this point, or is it? I think you're following the proper procedure with, with input there. So, um, I, I, uh, Sheila, you, you're, we no, have vote on it. we have to vote, right? Okay, um, all right, so I'm, and then I, I would like to uh, call the motion, and all in favor say aye. 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 All not in favor. Wait, which motion were you introduced? No, no, the, um, we're the amended. The amended motion. The yes. amended motion so. that you amended, and I seconded. Okay, all in favor of the amended motion. You Second. want to read it again, Eddie? No, aye. Say aye. 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 All aye. opposed. No, I, I'll do reluctantly, I say aye, and I'm just um, hoping maybe that our city commissioners will. Um, no, I, don't, I just wish our other two members were here, but I'm very reluctant. I, st I feel very strongly that it's we have trust to have one city commissioner and one library board member on this. So, no, I, did, I didn't follow that. What okay. you were saying? <laughs> you were Anybody saying? follow that? Oh. Did, uh, <laughs> I think I understand you, the reservation. Okay. But you did vote yes, right? Uh, yes, with uh, reluctance. Okay. Mm -hmm. you have to vote. No, I said aye with okay. everyone. Yes. Four ayes. Yeah. Okay. So, do we vote but on the first motion? No. 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 But it passed. It passed, but the city commission can come back and say, yes, we have one or we have none. Right. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. And we still could just uh, operate with one library board member on the committee, too. That's what I think ultimately yeah. could happen. They can right? come back and say, okay. uh, we don't agree with your composition. Right. Or we don't agree with your size. Yeah. If it's a joint committee. If it's not a joint committee, the ball is back in our court anyway to okay. take up at the next library meeting. All right. We're not, we haven't made it, put ourselves in deep trouble, I hope. I think we've done it as properly as we possibly can, and we can correct it at the next meeting if we have to, right? All right. Thank you very much. <sighs> now, I lost track of where I am again after all that conversation. <laughs> We did the, we did uh, this is the. Right. Oh, policy. That was just the building committee. Now we have Andy. <laughs> yeah, right. We still have to do the bylaws. That's right. All right, we're doing fine. We're going to do fine. Okay. The policy committee with Andy Thank Harris. And uh, first is a discussion of the bylaws. Right. So on August 4th, uh, Sheila, Doug, Catherine, Josh, and I met uh, to review our updated bylaws and consider um, a social media policy. We created an updated uh, version of the bylaws, which is for our consideration today. 
the changes uh, updated language regarding the Open Meetings Act. Um, it clarified the language regarding uh, what's required for a quorum and how many votes are required when we have fewer than six um, directors um, present. And um, we've con uh, consulted with uh, experts to ensure it's applicable to the Open Meetings Act and May I uh, have your attention, please? other the state law. Closes in 15 minutes. And as Catherine if you wish to included check out in the packet, please the bring them to the circulation new language is included please in red and it's, uh, jobs from the before us station. today for um, the copy machine consideration and, and approval. Printing services will discontinue five minutes before closing. Just to clarify, the one that there is an updated version uh, with only a different preamble that should have been given to all the board members and is available on the side table as well. Yes, Paul? Okay. So I don't think approval requires a motion. I don't see one in the packet. Uh, we were talking only about uh, discussing, uh, discussing today, today and then actually voting in September. Okay. All right, so then we can move on unless there's any comments about okay. the bylaws. Well, does anyone have any comments? Uh, I read Jim. Yeah. I read the changes and I thought they were very good. So. Okay, and I would just um, refer the public and fellow board members to the Library of Michigan. There's a primer on library policies, um, and it is extremely thorough. Recommendations for bylaws for library boards, um, and to consider as you review these, just four points: Does the policy conform to current law? And certainly, um, Catherine Bergeron and uh, our assistant director and uh, Josh Ruan have um, helped us with this by research. Uh, is the policy reasonable? Can the policy be enforced in a non-discriminatory manner? And is the enforcement of the policy measurable? Uh, so that applies to uh, board policies as well as general policies. So if there are any questions, certainly um, uh, uh, Trustee Harris and I are willing to answer those. Um, and what you're saying is, is that it did meet all those requirements. That's what you felt. Uh, in addition, we also had advice from other libraries and checked other uh, board policies, you know, uh, that were listed on websites. Okay. We're not going to vote on that today. Is no. that correct? We're correct. Okay. Uh, well, Catherine and I talked about um, Article 3, Section 6, that is Section 6 <coughs> under the new bylaws, the new numbering. Um, in the case of an emergency when only three board members can attend a meeting, a fourth board member may participate via telephone conference or any other technological measure without being physically present in order to establish a quorum for the transaction of business in accordance with the Michigan's Open Meetings Act. Um, and then it, it goes on. Um, we had some discussion uh, in the policy committee about what the board member who is not physically present could do. And what we have heard is that the person uh, cannot vote. Um, I guess I'd like to look into this a little bit more. It seems a little strange that a person uh, attending remotely uh, could help us achieve a quorum, but then could not vote. And anyway, a vote would require at least four, um, four affirmative votes. Right. I, I think. Um we confirmed today, did we not, that the law is silent on this topic, but from a policy perspective, we were, um, we were told that the trustee participating over the telephone should not vote. That's correct. correct. The <laughs> Michigan Friends of the Libraries Trustee Alliance, um, Lance Werner, Shirley uh, Brusima, uh, Coco Seward, we've discussed that in some counties and states, um, the person who's uh, participating in the meeting electronically can vote. Um, we were told in Michigan, no. There may be a um, uh, before coming before a committee and a bundle of bills, uh, something related to this. But as it stands now, we're to follow the Open Meetings Act for Michigan as it's written. Which, by the way, for our next meeting, we ought to have that uh, written out uh, in our board packet, so that um, we have that to refer to. 
Now, this is an unlikely circumstance, but uh, if we do have only three board members present and then a fourth pres a person, fourth board member, um, is um, present remotely, if we meet all of the legal requirements for that, uh, we would then have a quorum, but because we would not have a sufficient number of people, uh, board members present to pass any measure, it would just be a business, a, a meeting to, um, for discussions. There, there could really be no decisions made. Like we couldn't approve the consent agenda. Correct. Well, we could still conduct business. Uh, we still have a library report and mm -hmm. things like yes. that. So, I'm, uh, okay. For a, I think it's okay for a for a low probability situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just to make clear, even in the Open Meetings Act, the number of hoops you have to jump through in order to have that person officially present is is very high. Yes. You can't just call in from your cell phone in, in your car. You have to notice the meeting wherever the person's going to be at. Um, they have to be in a public space. So. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. One of the authorities that I spoke with said, show me where in the Open Meetings Act it says you don't have to be there. Um, and, and stress that point. Uh, as, as they have at the last trustee meetings, how important it is for board mem members to be present. That's why we're elected to do business and be present. But we all know there are many circumstances that come up with deadlines, with funding, et cetera, uh, where a vote is needed. Thank you, Mindy. Next was the social media. Right. We also um, reviewed again the proposed social media policy, which Catherine and Josh took the lead on. I believe they consulted other template policies. We made um, some revisions on August 4th, clarifying the language, um, ensuring that it uh, complied with all applicable laws. And again, this is just a discussion point only. There's no existing social media policy. This is a, a novel policy for us to consider and, and vote on when we come back in September. And you did look at other uh, the libraries. So this is consistent with libraries that do have social media policies. OK. We looked at other libraries as well as other big organizations. Including the city of Birmingham. Yes. So Catherine, would you clarify for the public and the board um, the exa current examples of Baldwin social media accounts? Uh, the library has social media accounts on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, um, any kind of open public forum associated with the library. And staff has discussed this point as well, and we're doing a little bit more further in investigation as well. As to as to what really is so what how is defined social media? The policy has two prongs. Um, the first part concerns guests, in other words, anyone from the outside um, using our social media, and the second is for employees of the library, what they can post. Question on that? Anyone else? Walter, please come forward. Beverly Hills. Um, the one thing I didn't see in here was a, as it relates to employees, of what happens if somebody violates the policy. And given the potential negative impacts, um, unfortunately, social media is not like other media where you can control it very quickly. It's going to ramp run out of control really quickly and we've seen large corporations where people have inadvertently texted something that they didn't mean to text and created a huge problem so I think it's worth at least considering some what are the ramifications of somebody doing something posting something inappropriately not through the proper channels thank you very much for pointing that out what else now we are at section four, which is the library report. Well, uh, one more point about the, uh, the policy committee meeting. And before I even get there, I'm going back through the policy. Walter raises a good point. I can't recall if there's any teeth in the proposal if a patron violates 
the policy. May I have your attention, please? The copy machine, computer, and printing services are now closed. The library right. closes in well, five minutes. Under the, the code of conduct policy has disciplinary language, doesn't it? Yes. Okay. Which involves um, banning from the library. It is much more, um, I, I'm speaking off the top of my head, it's much more difficult to ban somebody from social media. The, the other thing that we have to take into account, and one of the things that Josh and I did as we went through this policy, is we looked at also the terms of use of the social networks that we belong to. And that's the other problem, is, is what is legal for us to do based on those social networks. So the only uh, teeth, as Walter put it, in this is that the library retains the right to block or remove or prohibit any user for behavior that the library deems inappropriate on those social networks. Um, I'm, I'm not sure how we, if we are violating any other terms of service by putting kind of physical restrictions on people for what they post to our social media, but right. it might be worth investigating. Good point, good point. So the last thing we discussed at the policy meeting was uh, our review of the the other policies, which is consistent with one of our fiscal year goals, to go back uh, through our policies, determine what needs to be updated. We decided tentatively to address two at a time, with the next two being the meeting room policy and the internet policy, which hasn't been updated since the year uh, 2000. There are two policies that we think pertain more toward other subcommittees than the policy committee. Those are the personnel and finance policies. So Sheila and I thought it would be a good idea if the personnel committee and the finance committee take a look at its policy, determine if, if it needs to be updated. The balance of the, the policies will be reviewed by our, our committee going forward. That was it. Thank you, Andy. Thank mm -hmm. you very much for everyone that did, uh, worked on that. Looks like you had to do a lot of work and still have some to do. <laughs> the library report, Douglas. Well, the most important thing that has happened in the past month is that the citizens of Bloomfield Hills voted to extend their contract with Baldwin for a further six years. Uh, they did this on August 5th by voting 677 <coughs> to 298 to approve a tax of 0 0.39 mills for six years. Uh, that was a margin of 69% to 31%, a much larger margin than uh, Bloomfield Hills gave the Baldwin Library in uh, 2011. Uh, so we are very pleased that we're um, able to serve uh, the city of Bloomfield Hills for another six years. Um, and we are happy that the citizens of Bloomfield Hills will be enjoying our services for that period. Uh, it allows us to uh, to plan, uh, to do some long-range planning uh, now that we know that we have that revenue flow coming in each year for through the rest of the decade. So thank you, Bloomfield Hills. On um, in late July, I attended a meeting of the association, put on by the Association of Architecture Organizations. Uh, it was a K-12 architecture and design meeting at Cranbrook. I uh, gave a presentation about our thousand essential architecture books collection and talked about uh, how uh, we were looking next at promoting architecture to school-age children, and several of the participants uh, indicated that they would, they had information to send me um, ideas to uh, do exactly that. And finally, before I turn it over to Catherine, I'd like to mention that uh, in a couple of days, um, uh, I will be meeting along with John Hart and people from the city of Birmingham uh, as well as their telephone provider to talk about the future of our um, telephones, our physical telephones in the building. Currently we have analog phones and uh, they are becoming increasingly uh, 
passe, and so it is possible that within another year we will have to invest in IP phones that will um, connect to, uh, to the Internet. And so I will find more information and report on it when I have it. Catherine? Um, summer reading finished up last week and it was very successful. The library is now closed. It will reopen tomorrow at 9.30. Um, there are just a, a few statistics in your board packet. There will be a full report given next month. Um, uh, summer reading is generously sponsored by the Friends of the Pu Baldwin Public Library. Um, the Principal Shopping District has come forward and offered to potentially do a fundraiser for the library um, around the 75th anniversary of the publication of the Madeline books. Um, which occurs this year. So um, tentative plans, again very tentative, are for October 18th from 11 to 1. It would be at the Townsend Hotel and they would do a tea service and there would be a fashion show. Um, one of our youth librarians would go over and do a reading of a Madeline book and maybe an activity and we've arranged for someone to come and um, dress up as Madeline so kids can have their pictures taken. Um, that's a, that's a, uh, a super idea. I know. Yeah, it's that, actually, we, we've be been looking for ways to partner with the PSD lately, and, and they were the ones who came up with that idea. Great, so, uh, Catherine, can you give that PSD. date? Yes. I, it's tentative. tentative. Everything is tentative. But just so board members, so we um, know to help work on it. And but Saturday, October 18th, from 11 until 1. So a little late, late morning, early afternoon tea. Um, another partnership that we have been exploring is with the HLAA chapter in Royal Oak, which is the Hearing Loss Association of America. Um, we reached out to them um, looking at special needs in our library, um, and hearing loss is, is, one of, is one of the largest special needs that you'll find in any community. Um, so we're looking to partner with them maybe to get some recommendations, um, and we'd also talked about something um, called an audio frequency induction loop um, is the thing that we specifically talked to them about, um, which is essentially a wire that runs around the room that you can turn your hearing aid onto. So it gets rid of any background noise and you only hear the things that are coming through the microphone. So several other libraries have, have um, put them into their library, either into their multi-purpose multi room or to their service desks, so that someone who's interacting with a librarian at the desk, the, the librarians don't have to shout at them in order for them to understand. So we're going we're gonna to work with them and see if, if that's a possibility or anything else that they might recommend we could, we could work on at the library. Um, we are putting together an RFP for website services because one of our, our action items this year is to redo our website. Um, and just so you know, Books and Beyond should now be in homes and is available at the library, the one that covers the next three months. All right, Doug. We did put money uh, into this year's budget for the uh, redesign of the website. Now we are to the uh, liaisons, the friends of the library. Uh, no report. Beverly Hills, Walter. No report. You already did a good job of giving us some good information Thank tonight. Thank you. Pat Hardy. I, I want to say that I think the library board will continue to work to uh, can make that collaboration effective. It's just been so rewarding to see what has happened in the last three years. Sure. I'm going to speak for those uh, 677 residents who voted yes. Um, thank you very much, Doug, for coming with two commissioners, Jim Suhey and Frank Paisano, to the meet and greet that we had. On July, what, 25th, I believe it was. It was really good to have you there. It was a, a rather small audience, but not that small. And I understand some larger communities might have a coffee and maybe only a couple of people will show up. So I'm sort of proud of our representation, but really happy that your, uh, the trustees also came because I know um, you, have, you were all as concerned about this election as I certainly was. And, and it's, it's wonderful that this partnership will remain now for six whole years. Very, very happy about that. So thank you very much for all your hard work, all that you do. And, and uh, I know our residents are very pleased to have this beautiful library and all the help that you offer, ever, all the programs that you offer 
you're really a great asset to the community of the city of Bloomfield Hills. So thank you. Well, Pat, thank you. Thank you, thank Pat. Thank you for all your work. Yeah, thank mm -hmm. you. Great job. I also wanted to, um, besides commending Pat for all she did to carry out the, the positive word, uh, resident Mark Capel, he worked tirelessly and um, certainly carried the, ban the Baldwin banner. And to thank Andy and Doug for working on the contract and liaisoning. Uh, any unfinished business that proposed by Ken Alder, I see. Um, in July, the library board discussed the uh, calendar for 2015. A decision was made to postpone voting until the uh, Birmingham City Commission released its calendar. Uh, that calendar is still not available, uh, but it will be in September. Uh, therefore, we will discuss the 2015 calendar and vote on it in September. Business, we have the approval of the library goals on page 42. Uh, some of these goals are uh, ongoing, such as offering quality, dynamic services, collections, and programs, uh, develop and maintaining partnerships with uh, all parts of our communities, and maintaining a balanced budget. Uh, one thing that is specific for this year is updating the strategic plan, and uh, we heard uh, this evening that that should be done within a couple of months. Um, Something that is uh, a very big issue potentially for this year is supporting the library board's efforts to improve the library building. And then there are sub goals such as the external book drop, um, assisting on any new committee, uh, finalizing a building agreement with the city of Birmingham, um, and two smaller items are um, uh, looking at the library security system to see if it needs to be updated and exploring the possibility of putting a staff ac access station and alarm keypad at the front door where there is handicap, uh, the handicap ramp. Um, we are also looking at improving our online presence and a very big issue here is redesigning, replacing Baldwin's website. That is a whole lot of work. And the people on that committee are Catherine, Josh, and Bart Joya. Uh, we also hope to implement a new version of the Circe Dynex online catalog if it becomes available, one that uh, provides better access to electronic resources, which is a um, the, the fastest growing part of our collection. The circulation is definitely the fastest growing. And um, then for any other products that uh, Circe Dynex brings out, we will explore them, see if they're appropriate to us. Um, we just heard from the personnel committee. We uh, are definitely putting on the uh, pressure to look at all of our policies and procedures this year. We've been busy with other matters for a while and we need to uh, look at these and update them when necessary. And that includes the employee handbook and internal procedures. Um, the eighth goal is to uh, evaluate, maintain, and upgrade library technology. And under that, we find the three technology projects that we have discussed quite a bit. Um, just maintaining all of the hardware and software for the staff and public. Um, we are now using the city's accounting system for much of our financial data, but not for trust data. So we will see if we can uh, make the move in that area and leave our other accounting system behind. And um, also to investigate the implementation of NSIP in the MELCAT uh, interface. That uh, probably sounds a little bit mysterious to people, but NSEP is a protocol that, if uh, properly Im implemented, would allow us to be a lot more efficient in MELCAT. Uh, it would allow the transfer of data. Currently, we are duplicating a lot of records in, um, in MELCAT and in our local system. And if we can avoid that duplication, it means that interlibrary loan would, would be more uh, efficient. Number nine in the list is improving staff morale. And uh, this involves uh, continuing edu 
education opportunities to staff, um, and also holding educational events uh, on uh, site, including um, one about active shooters. And then um, this year, we were not able to provide a salary increase. We definitely want to explore that possibility for fiscal year 2015-16. And finally, we want to continue fundraising efforts. Um, one sub-goal mentioned here is the Madeline Tea Party. Another is the uh, feasibility of planning books and bites for 2015. And of course, if the um, building uh, committee that develops asks us to explore fundraising for the building plans, uh, we would be doing that as well. So it is a, full, a pretty full platter for the year. Uh, Are we going to have uh, a motion for that? So uh, who is yes, as long as uh, the board is, um, thinks it's advisable, we can vote on approving these, these goals. You have this motion written down somewhere? No. Uh, oh, it, excuse in the me, agenda. In, in the agenda. Oh, it's in the agenda, OK. Well, Andy, do you want to bring that forth for us? Sure, sure. Um, motion to approve the library goals for fiscal year 2014-2015 as found on page 42 of the August 18th packet. I second, second. it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion all, uh, all opposed? None. Seeing none, the motion passes. Now we have nothing on the consent agenda, and we're at the information only section. Well, I think um, we should, in Frank's um, honorable oh, tradition, thank you, thank, you, right. thank you very much. Yes, honor the employee uh, staff uh, anniversaries. I'll try to give it the same gusto that Frank does. Uh, <laughs> Ann Davies, seven years. Tony Lowe, nine years. Karen Coyle, five years. Susan LaBelle, twenty-six years. Uh -huh. Linda Beyer, five years. Maggie Cumming, three years. Kristen Tate, 13 years. Paul, one year. Beth Knowlton, two years. And Terry Meyer, two years. Thank you for your commitment uh, to the library to make it such a great place. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. Now, if we can do the information only. Why, thank you. So this is actually our programming slow season for which Youth Services is very, very happy after having done over 100 programs, I think, in the last two months. So well, while people are on vacation, um, we, so we just have a few events of note. The first one is the first grade first card program, which allows first graders to get their um, best school supply, which is their library card, um, which occurs twice. You can either go on Saturday, August 23rd or Saturday, September 6th at 10.30 a.m. Um, we also have author Bill Morris coming uh, next Sunday, August 24th at 2 p.m. He is the author of Motor City Burning, which has gotten some fantastic reviews. And there was a whole article about him, about him in the Free Press just a couple of weeks ago. Um, and then finally, uh, the youth uh, services department is also participating in Michigan Reads, um, which is a program from the Library of Michigan that um, focuses on the importance of reading and sharing books with children um, by doing a one Wednesday Wonderful Bedtime Tales, specifically on the Michigan Reads book, which is Acoustic Rooster and His Barnyard Band by Kwame Alexander and illustrated by Tim Bowers. And that is Wednesday, September 10th at 6.30 p.m. Thank you very much, Catherine. Do we have any general public comments? Seeing none, I would entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. Thank you so much. We will move immediately to the trust meeting. And if I can find the page here. So we must, first of all, uh, uh, I called the meeting to order, and we must establish a quorum. Mr. Suhey. Here. Ms. Bryce. Here. Mr. Harris. Here. Ms. Jenderdown. Here. Thank you. Absent and excused, Mr. Terra and Mr. Pisano. 
and the consent agenda. I hope I can not read it because we want to move on. So we uh, uh, have to do a, a roll call vote on the consent agenda. Motion first. first, somebody needs to um, make a motion. motion, to make a motion right. and That's correct. Thank you. I'll move to make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. Okay. Then we'll have a roll call vote. Uh, Mr. Suhey. Aye. Ms. Bryce. Yes. Mr. Harris. Yes. Mr. Underdown. Yes. And absent and excused are Mr. Terra and Mr. Pisano. Thank you. And do we have any new business? And we don't Where's have Frank, Frank again to <laughs> <laughs> describe the, uh, uh, what's happening with the, uh, the trust. Uh, I don't know if we can state that we have uh, 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 $1.4 million in the trust. And we've uh, uh, approved uh, expenditures for, for many things on this, on this month's budget. And we re did receive uh, $117.45. Anyone else have anything else they want to throw in about the trust? Uh, we did um, make a number of expenditures this month for uh, Baldwin's new low vision services. Uh, and uh, the, these expenditures are being made out of revenues from last year's Books and Bites fundraiser. Uh, next month, uh, Susan LaBelle from the Adult Services Department, who's been involved in this project, uh, will be addressing the library board to let you know about uh, this project. And, and I, I think some of you, you want to talk about some of the other, there were several other expenses that were fairly significant to, which I guess those things have been meant, not mentioned at a board meeting, but the addition in the Jean Lloyd room. And yes, uh, we, um, we have made payment, uh, the first payment before the final payment was made in July, and we now have a nice new audiovisual system in the Jean Lloyd room on the second floor of the library. Also this month there were a couple of um, large expenditures for subscription databases, and uh, these were made out of the um, Roninger Fund for reference services, uh, which is a, an endowment fund containing over $200,000. So we get quite a bit of earnings out of that fund every year. So the, the total for this month wa was $25,926. So this trust, as I mentioned earlier, uh, does provide a significant amount of extra income for us to do things that perhaps we wouldn't be as able to do. And it's part of what makes Baldwin Library is so special, I think, is that all these programs are provided and they're not free, but they certainly take a dedicated staff to have it come off. So thank you. So register number 3984, Able Zone. So that is for low vision? Was yes. that the, per the, mm -hmm. the one purchase? Yes. Or the, okay, yep. great. Well, it was a variety of devices all okay. from one. Super, that's terrific. Thank you. And. Um, the databases are listed under ProQuest, and I believe the, uh, those two databases are the New York Times and also a magazine newspaper um, service. Are there any other comments or business that we would like to transact with the trust? I think it's noteworthy. Do you want to say anything, David, on 77 about the um, what the friends enabled uh, the summer programs to do? You're on 77. You go ahead and say it. Well, I, I just as you heard Catherine talk about the number of summer programs for adults and youth and teens, and uh, it's itemized on 77 uh, some of the related expenses to those programs, but um, certainly money well spent and hard earned by the friends. That, Over four thousand dollars. Four thousand dollars. Yes, and that's. A significant amount of money, well spent. However, do I have a motion for adjournment? I move to adjourn um, the August 18th meeting, trust meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? We are adjourned, and thank you very much.